Hey everyone, so today, we're gonna check out another really fun thing in WAN 2.2, the WAN Video Fun Control for 2.2. Recently, WAN 2.2 just dropped, and Alibaba's been doing ongoing updates to this model. It's called WAN 2.2 Fun Control. This fun control was actually released before in Alibaba's PAL for WAN 2.1. Now they're bringing it over to WAN 2.2 with Control Net Motion Control and also the fun in-paint models for video generation. As usual, after the base model drops, Alibaba PAL starts experimenting with it, this time using WAN 2.2 to test out control motion features. They're calling this the Fun 14B Control and also the Fun 14B in-painting. The in-painting part is for animating the first and last frames of the video. That's the main thing it does. Today, we're focusing more on the fun control model. So, fun control can take canny, depth, pose, and MLSD as control motion guides for video generation. It can also use point trajectories, like, say, this dog here, where you'll see two little guiding dots on screen that track the motion. Then, it'll render the image so the dog's head follows that motion path. But the most popular way to use it is with ControlNet, where you can use DW Pose, Open Pose, Depth Maps, or Canny Edges as motion guides for characters. Now, I'll be honest, it's not top-tier quality. And I think that's because, from what I can tell, this is mostly experimental stuff from Alibaba Pal. These are basically preview models for what's coming later, so this is just a sneak peek at what WAN 2.2 could do in the future. The fun control model is downloadable, and it's structured the same way as the regular WAN 2.2 14B models. You've got a high noise model and a low noise model, so there are two separate folders. I'd suggest renaming the safe tensor files to something more meaningful like I did for the high model and the low model too. Instead of keeping the default Diffusion PyTorch models, go with names that make it easier to tell them apart, especially since you'll be dealing with both high and low noise files. You'll want to save these in your comfy UI folder. Specifically, go into the Models subfolder, then into the Diffusion Models folder, and drop the safe tensor files in there. For me, I created a dedicated folder for WAN 2.2 Fun Control, and inside it, I've got both the high noise and low noise model files. This way, it's easier to keep track of and I can manage everything more cleanly. Now, to run this in Comfy UI, the easiest way is to use the Comfy UI WAN Video Wrapper. This custom node pack comes with example workflows. After you download it, go into the Examples Workflow folder and you'll see a file called WAN Video Fun 2.2 Control Examples. That's a JSON file. It's the example workflow we're going to play around with today. I'll tweak it a bit to fit what we're doing with WAN. 2.2 Fun Control. Once you download the custom nodes and drag and drop that example workflow file in, you'll see the diagram pop up like this. Basically, you load an image and then you load a video for the control reference, like right here. Once you do that, you'll see the control net reference show up. In this case, I'm using the DW Pose preprocessor. Then, next, there's this WAN video encode node for the control embed. That's where we pass the control net image frames, this one here, and send them to the video encoder. It converts the frames into latent data and then passes it to the WAN video's control embed. This step is how we tell WAN 2.2, hey, use this as the motion guide for the video we're about to generate. Now, moving on to the next part of the workflow. Input your image. In this example, I've got this image and I resized it. But all of that's already set up in the example workflow. You can just follow along to see how it works. The point is, we're connecting the control embed data to the WAN video's image to video encode node. And we're doing that because we're using control net from the earlier part of the workflow. So we need those models loaded first. You'll see two model loaders, one for WAN 2.2 fun control high noise, and the other on the left here for the low noise version. These are the same models we just talked about downloading from the Alibaba PAL Hugging Face repo. One thing to note, both the high and low noise models are pretty big. Each is about 28 gigabytes. So when you run them, they'll eat up over 20 gigs of VRAM. If you've got less VRAM, you can try the WAN Video Comfy FP8 Scaled Down model. That's also in the WAN Video Wrapper Hugging Face repo. It has both high and low noise versions. 
just make sure you download the FP8 versions for both. Like, if you're using the FP8 high noise model, pair it with the FP8 low noise one too, which is way more consumer GPU friendly. And if you want to check out what the four model setup looks like, you can go back to Alibaba Pal and try it there. Anyway, let's keep moving through the workflow. Another thing in the default settings, there's a LoRa loaded in here, the LightX 2V text to video V2 LoRa. It helps reduce the number of sampling steps during generation. Then we've got the WAN video sampler, same idea as the native node we've used before for WAN 2.2 video generation. We're running two samplers, one for the high noise model and one for the low noise model. Same thing with the WAN video wrapper nodes. We've got both high and low noise versions. We split the sampling total steps. By default, it's set to six steps total, three for high noise, three for low noise. One difference from regular WAN 2.2 video generation. Here, we're using DPM++ SDE as the scheduler, so don't use UniPC. That won't work here. After sampling, we go to VAE decode, and then we get the final video output. I also added frame interpolation to double the frame rate, from 30 to 60 or 16 to 32. Just a little trick to make the motion smoother. I've already run a test with that, but since the original workflow too much spaghetti flying around, I reorganized it to make it cleaner and easier to follow step by step. That's the version I'm using now. So first I've got an image here, that's what I'll be animating using control net pose, and I've got a reference video too. One thing I added to the sampling setup is the context options. The default example workflow in the wrapper doesn't include this, but I wanted to try it because it lets you generate longer videos. With context options, you can split the video into chunks of 81 frames, which lets you generate longer sequences, like the 450 frames video I'm trying here. It works kind of like a for loop method I've used before in native node workflows, which I showed in previous tutorial. Let's see how this turns out. By the way, it's cool that WAN 2.2 Fun Control supports both 720p and 480p resolutions, so pick whichever one your GPU can handle. I'm going with 720p, but one thing to watch, the preprocessor resolution defaults to 704 pixels. You can go up to 768, but I usually stick with 704, it works better. Even if you set your output to 720p, it'll still convert internally to 704 in this setup. All right, let's run the video generation and see what we get. First, it loads the DW Pose control net for my video. I've got all 450 frames loaded. Fingers crossed, there are no errors. As you can see, it's showing the DW Pose result here. That's my skeleton pose, which will guide the character's motion. Next, it sends that pose data through the WAN Video's encode node, which creates the control embed and passes it to the image to video encode node. Then it jumps to the first WAN Video sampler, that's the high noise model. Total steps, six. Split steps, three. So three steps on high noise, three on low noise. Let's see how the output looks. Okay, so I did two tests. The first one was 450 frames, six total steps, three split, using context options with uniform standard. Now, this isn't the quality you'd expect from WAN 2.1 vase. You can see the clothing doesn't quite match the reference, like the colors are off. The dress? When the character turns around, it doesn't look right. The color changes, it's messy. But when it swings back to this side, it kind of recovers and matches the reference again. So yeah, the model can follow control net motion, but it's clearly still experimental, like I thought. For the second test, I bumped up the sampling steps, five each, so 10 total, the color looks better. Even then, the first few frames don't match the outfit from the reference image, and at certain points, the whole outfit goes completely off model, totally different from the original. Let me pull up the reference image so you can see the difference. Right here, you can see it's trying to match the shirt color, but it completely missed the skirt. And now, the character's wearing some random outfit that wasn't in the reference at all. So yeah, I'd say this isn't quite up to par for a motion control model. Compared to WAN 2.1 vase, which I've used before, like that Pinterest image example, I generated a video where the character moved differently, but the outfit and background stayed consistent. Even with different poses, it kept the style locked in. Sure, the character's distance changed because it was mimicking a TikTok dance video, 
but it still looked cohesive, so compared to that fun control? Not there yet. From what I can tell, Alibaba release pattern is always the same. First they released the base model, WAN 2.1, then fun control and fun in paint as experimental versions, then later they released the full WAN 2.2 vase, fully functional, with all the bugs fixed. So this fun control feels like an early test model, more of a research thing than a production-ready tool. You can use it for fun, maybe for social media posts or quick AI video. I did one more test. This time I used the first frame of the reference video, then ran it through Flux Context to change the style and some elements. That actually helps a lot with fun control, because this model works best when the reference image is super close in composition. For example, I took these video frames, ran them through Flux Context to change the walking path on this bridge, and added some fire on top to make it look different. Then I used Depth Anything V2 as the control net model. And the output? Way better. I even doubled the frame rate so the motion is super smooth, and as you can see, it copies the original motion while adding new elements. In another test, I added even more fire, made it look totally different, but still kept the motion accurate. Now, this one used DW Pose, so the walking backward motion looks a bit awkward. DW Pose doesn't handle complex multi-element scenes well, so in cases like this, Depth Anything V2 does a much better job in this kind of scene. So after testing WAN 2.2 Fun Control, here's what I've found. If you use the right image composition, like this one, you can get a pretty solid output. But if your first frame has a totally different pose or position from the reference, like here it falls apart. See the pose here is a close-up, but my reference image is a full body shot. So the model struggles with accuracy, both in pose and character consistency. Let's try the same guiding motion here. By the way, I am gonna use the same TikTok dance video clip. I'll run it with the same settings, using DW pose, and I'll use flux context again. Since the poses match, I'll change the reference image to an anime style first, then we'll generate from there. Here's the example, TikTok dance footage, pose like this. Then I convert the first frame to an anime style using flux context. Send that into the video generator, and here's the result. See, when the first frame matches the control net pose in composition, the output is way better. No outfit inconsistencies, no weird deformations. So, I'd say this model can do control net motion for AI videos, but it's not flexible. You can't just use any random pose or reference image and expect good results. With one 2.1 vase, or the upcoming 2.2 vase, I think you'll get more flexibility. Those models can handle different poses of reference image and still keep the character consistent, especially when combined with control net input. But fun control? It really needs help. Like using flux context to match the character and style first, then applying the same pose for motion, that's how you get stable results. Like in this example, hair, sweatshirt, pants, all consistent. Background, gas station, same style throughout. No weird changes. I think it's better to have a control net guided image or flux context image editing before running the fun control. Because right now, it doesn't have the vase reference to video mechanism. Take this example, totally different pose from the reference using DW pose in fun control. Play it again, you can see the character inconsistency clearly. But when I used WAN 2.1 vase with the same reference video and image, just the 14 BFP 16 model, no extra bells and whistles. It's way better. I even added a LoRa to boost detail and quality. Let me show you one more example with one 2.1 vase so you can see the difference. All right, so after generating with one 2.1 vase using both reference video and image, I tested two resolutions. The bottom one is my first try, 480p. The top three are 720p. Obviously 720p looks much clearer, and even though the source video is 30 frames per second, I doubled it to 60 frames per second with frame interpolation. Looks really smooth. I also did some upscaling, and honestly, the 480p version isn't bad either, still looks good at 30 or 60 FPS. The key point? WAN 2.1 vase 
keeps the character's outfit consistent as long as your text prompt is on point. Even with totally different poses between the reference image and video, like here, the character starts standing, but the reference image shows a different pose. It still animates smoothly. No morphing clothes, no untucked shirts, nothing awkward. Compare that to the fun control version, huge difference. The outfit's all over the place, colors are wrong, nothing matches the reference. So that's what I've found testing fun control. Even though it's called fun control, it's really just for fun. Don't take it too seriously. It feels like it's straight out of Alibaba's research lab, more of a prototype than a finished product. Think of this fun model as the appetizer before the main course. The WAN 2.2 vase is coming, and that's when things will really come together. So try it out if you're curious, but don't expect perfection. Anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. Have a great day. See ya.